everybody, it's me, Mark Robertson, back in today. Today is episode three of our new series, Sacramento Kings Youth Invasion. But before we get into that, I just wanna thank you guys so much. I always write out these videos an hour before I start filming, and something crazy happened. So I wrote out that I had 248 subscribers at a certain time, and then like 30 minutes later, I looked, and it was at 256. 256. That's eight plus more subscribers in 30 minutes. Thank you to everyone that has subscribed in the recent day. Thank you so much, you guys are the best. That's 11 new subscribers that joined the community. We're only 44 away from 300 subscribers. 300 subscribers! You know how close that is, you guys? That is awesome! Thank you guys so much for joining the community. While you guys are down in the comments below, coming down about this new episode, make sure you guys hit that like button and then hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Hit the notification button if you want to become a part of my six-man squad. And make sure that if you are part of the six-man squad within the first five minutes of this video coming out, comment down below, hashtag six-man hype. I'll know you guys are there. I love reading all your guys' comments. And our sub of the day is someone that has been coming for videos on videos on videos. They are awesome. Thank you for, so much for coming. And they are D... Zert underscore punk you have been coming on so many of my videos. Thank you so much I always like reading your comments. You're always so uplifting always so supportive always like to give me opinions on different things Thank you so much and you're the sub of the day And if you guys also want to talk to me about anything on my videos go ahead and hit me up on my Twitter at Kings for life 2k 17 my Instagram at Mark Robertson jr. And my Facebook at Mark Robertson jr. And I'll see you guys there. So today's episode is going to be all about power forward center from Duke, Harry Giles. This is the guy that was ranked second overall among prospects in 2016 and was ranked first overall in forwards in 2016. This guy is really good. He is a sleeper in this draft. He is a steal in this draft. The only problem with this situation is that there is an injury risk. He does have a history of an injury. That's the reason why he didn't play much for Duke. It's because he was out for six weeks on a surgery needed injury to his knee. And which really sucks. It would have been a lot cooler to see how he would have progressed over time with like he was projected to go first overall in the 2017 draft. Not saying Marco Fultz is not a good player. He's going to be a good player, but Harry Giles was that much better at that time. When he came out of high school, he was number two and number one in those two categories. That is insane to hear about. Let's go over his stats really quick. 6'11", power forward center, out of Duke, and he has a 7'3", wingspan. He played in 26 games for only 11 and a half minutes, scoring 3.9 points a game, shooting 57%, and having no three ball percentage, shooting 50% from the free throw line with 3.8 boards, and had... 0.3 assists, 0.3 steals, 0.3 blocks, 0.7 turnovers, and 2.2 fouls. And just, just think about this. He only played 26 games, so those numbers would probably be better. On the film that I have watched on him, he is really good at being a good defensive big. He is go That's one of his highlights. There's a little bit about his defensive game that he needs to work on, be more consistent, be more... Discipline in the game, but I'm gonna get on that in a little bit. Let me talk about his strengths first Strength wise he has a great pick and roll game. He can set good solid brick screens pick and roll to the post and get alley-oops or get Just back down on somebody in the post He goes hard to the rim always wanting to get there as fast as possible Really good at fighting off bigger defense keeps heading the defense like I said steal get steals and blocks whenever possible has great length and can create Second ch chance opportunities for his team can be very physical like I said down in the post He has a developing post game. That's a big reason why he was ranked number two overall in the entire Recruit or ranked recruitment for high schoolers in 2016 But obviously his knee injury kind of sent him back a little bit. He has shown flashes of extending his range not only just to mid-range, but to the perimeter as well. We'd like to see how he's going to do on that. I've heard some people say that he has limitations when it comes to that. From what I was seeing, he was shooting pretty well. It's just he has to like put a little more power in his follow-through. But if that's it, then I'm, I'd be very happy. Things for him to work on, like, like I said. Continue to develop his offensive game. 
work on his shot more consistently before moving out. So like stay in that 10 to 13 range, work on that, make sure that becomes very consistent and then slowly work your way out. Become more disciplined at, at defense. He just, he was really good when he was staying disciplined. He would dive to the, the ground just to get steals. He would get blocks, like back-to-back -back blocks in the same possession. It's great to see him get to that point. Now we're going to move on to his low ceiling, his middle pack, and his high ceiling. And out of the three players that I've, ch I've gone over so far, and I know I said this with the Justin Jackson one, which thank you guys so much for watching both of the last two. Justin Jackson was up to 200, almost to 200 views, and I think... I think 20 likes, if I'm not mistaken, which is great for you. Thank you guys so much. And the Darren, the Darren Fox one, oh my goodness, is that like 550 views in three days. You guys are insane when it comes to that. That's awesome. Thank you guys so much. I think that's up to like 35 to 40 likes. I haven't checked as of recently, but I'm going to check right after this video. Let's go into his lowest middle pack and highest ceiling. I know you guys know that I like to hear you guys talk about it down below. Make sure you guys comment down below what you guys think, but here's mine. And I had a really hard time. That's why it took a little bit more time to write up this one because there's a lot to look up when it comes to post big man. And with this game right now, his lowest ceiling would be somewhere like a Bismack Biombo. Good, good rebounder and got has post offense. That would be still a really good usable backup power forward. That would be great. What if he got middle pack though? What if his mid range became better and better? He could end up someone like Dennis Rodman. And and I was just watching a little bit of Den Dennis Rodman game. It reminds me a lot about about Mr. Harry G Harry Giles because Harry Giles can get up with how with how tall he is with being six eleven and having a three seven three wingspan. He can jump up and get rebounds pretty easily. And that was what De Dennis Rodman was known for getting rebounds pretty consistently and that'd be great. Dennis Rodman has his game as his game got better as he got older, his mid-range got better. He was able to take a few threes, made a good clip of them. So, if Harry Giles could get to that point, that'd be great. And here is Harry Giles' high, highest ceiling. His highest ceiling is Andre Drummond. And I know that right now he would be more of a backup power forward, but just imagine an Andre Drummond off the bench. What if we had a double-double man like, like Andre Drummond off of our bench? Would you guys be happy with that? I know I would. Andre Drummond, great rebounder, great post offense, can run the floor, and a really good pick-and-roll player. And as we've seen in the Uncle Drew League and in the Africa game, the, the NBA Africa game, he was shooting three balls like it was nothing. And he was shooting mid-range like it was nothing. If that can happen with Harry Giles, if that could be Harry Giles' game, we'd be having a 15 and 15 player off the bench. He would even be better than Allen than Allen Williams, which I which I've been hearing you guys talk about Allen Williams to me on Twitter. And honestly, Allen Williams is a good player. I'm glad that the Suns got Allen Williams. But how we got who we got in this offseason was great and in this draft Harry Giles is definitely going to be a steal doesn't matter how long it take it'll take him a little bit of time to get back to it because he's still he said that he's good from his injury but he's still going to have to work back into his offensive game that he had in high school but just imagine 15 and 15 I know I'd be happy having an extra 15 rebounds off the bench extra 15 points off the bench a great 6-7 man that would be awesome to see I don't know what you guys think Make sure you guys comment down below what you guys think. Hit me up on all my, all my social medias. I like to talk to you guys on both of them. I love talking to you guys down below. Make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification cut button, become a part of my six-man squad. And I'll catch you guys later. See ya, Hoop fans.